Hello, and welcome to Beat the Nation Sats Week 7 with me, Mr. Barton. Now, what is Beat the Nation, I hear you say? Well, thousands of students all around the country have taken my mixed topic Sats quizzes on my diagnosticquestions.com website. And I've gone into one of these quizzes and I've chosen three questions. And they're the three questions that you see in front of you here. And I'm gonna set you five challenges. The first challenge is, can you get each of these questions correct? Now, I should tell you that that isn't going to be all that easy because these aren't just any old three questions. I've chosen the three worst answered questions from one of these quizzes. So be on your toes. These are going to be tricky ones. Challenge two, out of these three questions, what do you reckon the worst answered question is? And then I wonder if you can predict for each of these questions what the most popular choice of wrong answer is. And then, can you explain why other students might choose each of these popular wrong answers? And then finally, and I think this is the hardest challenge of them all, imagine you were sat next to somebody who was convinced that their wrong answer was correct. How would you convince them not only that you're right, but in a nice way, that they're wrong? So what I suggest you do now is you pause this video and work your way through these three questions, bearing my five challenges in mind. And then when you're ready, unpause this video and we'll go through the answers together. Good luck. Okay, have you got your answers? Nice one, right. So to build up drama, I'm gonna reveal, reveal these in reverse order. So this is the least worst answered of those questions and it is this one here on fractions. So we have got one half of one half and we need to figure out what that is equal to. Now, we've got three options, but we've also got an all of the above option. It's always worth just scanning the answers here, because when we see all of the above, that means, of course, we've got to check each of these options to see if all of them are correct. So let's start with this one. Um, is a half of a half equal to a quarter? Well, a good way to think about this is to think of a shape. Let's imagine we've got a shape, and we'll take a half of the shape. So there's a half of the shape. And let's then do a half of a half. So we've got to halve our half. So we end up with this portion of the shape. And yeah, that to me looks like it's a quarter. So I think a half of a half is definitely equal to a quarter. So we'll have a tick next to a quarter. So A is definitely right. But we've got to check B and C. So next up, let's have a half multiplied by a half. Now, do you know how to multiply your fractions? When you multiply two fractions together, you multiply the numerators. One multiplied by one gives me one. Then you multiply the denominators. Two multiplied by two gives me four. So a half of a half is the same as a half multiplied by half gives a quarter. The word of in mathematics often means multiply, so watch out for that one. But what about C? What about if we have a half divided by two? Is that a quarter? Let's go back to our shape again. Let's take a shape. Let's take a half of that shape. So let's imagine it's this half here. And let's split that half in two. What are we left with? Well, we're left with exactly a quarter. So all of those answers seem to come to a quarter. So I think the correct answer to this question is D, all of the above. Let's take a look if we're right. Whew, yes, we are, luckily. But look at that, only 50% of students agree with us that that's the correct answer. By far the most popular wrong answer is A with 24%. That's students thinking the answer's a quarter. So let's have a look at one of those students' explanations and see where they're going wrong. Now, if you read that explanation, that's perfect. It's a beautiful explanation for why the answer is a quarter. But of course, as we've seen, you've got to check each of the answers as well to see whether they're also right because we've got that option of D, all of the above. Okay, let's have a look at the second least worst answered question. And it is this one here on percentages. Now, this is one of my favorite questions because it's very easy to make a mistake here and rush into it. So let's write down what we've got. We've got 30% of something, of some mystery amount. Don't know what that mystery amount is. 30% of something equals 75 pounds, okay? We've got to find out what on earth this mystery amount is. Now, a good place to start here is to try and build up to see if we can get to what 100% is. Because if we can find out what 100% of this mystery amount is, we've got that mystery amount. Because 100% is just the thing itself. 100% of five is five, 100% of seven is seven. If we can work out what 100% is, we've got it. So let's do a middle step. Let's find out what 10% is. So if 30% of this mystery amount is 75 quid, what must 10% of this mystery amount be? Well, to get from 30% to 10%, you divide by three. 
So to get from 75 pounds to our mystery amount, we'll also divide by three. And I think 75 divided by three gives me 25 pounds. So now let's do a similar thing and let's get up to 100%. Let's multiply by 10. And let's multiply that by 10. 25 quid multiplied by 10 is 250 pounds. So I think that our mystery amount, this mystery answer is 250 pounds. Now that's looking good because it's one of the answers, but often in maths, you have nice ways of checking things. So let's put that back into the question. Let's imagine the question said, what is 30% of 250 quid? Let's work that out. And if it comes to 75 pounds, we're laughing. So 30% of 250 quid. So uh, I'm going to work out 10% of 250 quid. So I'm going to divide 250 pounds by 10 and I'm going to get 25 quid. And then to get 30%, I'm going to multiply. Uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. 10% is equal to 25 quid. So 30%, if I times it by three, is going to give me 75 pounds. So if I put it back into the question and I pretend the question said work out 30% of 250, it seems to be 75 pounds is coming out as the answer. So I'm claiming that the correct answer to this is D, 250. Now look at this, only 48% of students got that right. And again, the most popular wrong answer is A. Can you see where A comes from? 22 pound 50, maybe you got A yourself. Don't worry if you did, it's, it's a very popular answer. And if you read why students got A, you can see. What, what have they done there? They've tried to work out what 30% of 70 quid is. They've tried to do 30% of 75 pounds, but that's not what the question's asking. 30% of something equals 75 pounds. So watch out for that one. Some students also end up with B, 225 pounds for this one by, by doing it backwards. But again, it, it's kind of clinging on to these rules is really dangerous in mathematics. Whereas if you just take your time, set out what the question tells you, what you know and what you don't know and build it up systematically, hopefully you'll end up with the right answer. Which brings us to the worst answered question. And it is, this question here on angles. The diagram shows two angles. Angle A is 40 degrees larger than angle B. How many degrees is angle A? Right, what do we know about angles on a straight line? Well, angles are on a straight line around a point like that, they add up to 180 degrees. So whenever we work out angle A and we add it to angle B, we know they've got to equal 180 degrees. That's a fact. But the other thing we know is that angle A is 40 degrees larger than angle B. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that angle B is called X. No idea what X is, but I'm just going to give it that name. What does that mean I can call angle A? Well, I know that it's 40 degrees larger. So I know that it's whatever B is plus this mystery 40 degrees. So now I've got myself an equation. Instead of saying A plus B equals 180, I'm going to say X plus 40 plus X equals 180. Now just take your time and just check we're happy with that. I've just renamed angle BX and so there it is there, X, but therefore that allows me to rename angle A not just to any old random letter but I can call it X plus 40 because it's 40 degrees bigger than whatever B is. So now I've got myself an equation where I can try and solve this equation. I've got an X plus an X which gives me 2X. I've still got my plus 40 and that whole thing there is equal to 180 degrees. So I've got two lots of x plus 40 was 180. I'm gonna subtract 40 from both sides. So I'm gonna end up with two x equals 140, subtracting 40 off two x plus 40 and 40 from 180. Then I'm gonna divide by two, and it's gonna leave me with 70. So x is equal 70 degrees. Now that's one of the answers, but before I rush in there, hold on. How many degrees is angle A? Angle A was this one, x plus 40, 70 degrees plus 40 degrees equals 110 degrees. And just like the last question, often in maths we have a nice way of checking this. Let's put it back into the question. I reckon that angle A is 110 degrees. I reckon angle B is X, which we know is 70 degrees. And if you do 110 plus 70, you get 180, which is looking good. So I'm claiming the answer to this one is A, 110 degrees. Let's have a look. Yes, we're right, but only 46% of students got that answer correct. By far the most popular wrong answer is C, 140 degrees. Where does C come from? Well, this is students trying to do a bit of a quick way of doing this. They both add up to 180. So the answer must be 140 because you take 40 degrees off. It's not quite right. It wouldn't balance up. If one of the angles is 140, what does it mean the other angle is going to be? Because if they add up to 180, you're going to have 140 degrees and you're going to have 40 degrees. 
But the problem is that doesn't mean that angle A is 40 degrees bigger. So setting it up as an equation, writing down the information you've got is the best way to approach this question. So how did you get on with those three? I thought they were tricky ones, really, really tricky this week. Um, but hopefully you've heard the explanation, you've had a chance to think about it, and that'll put you on the path to understanding it. Um, if you've enjoyed these, you're more than welcome to try as many of these out for free as you like. There's 20 of these available on my Diagnostic Questions website. That's diagnosticquestions.com forward slash revision 2019. And if you're a teacher and you want to set these for your students so that they can work through them and they'll be automatically marked for you, ED is the best place to go there. If you go to ed.co.uk um, to the revision schemes of work. And if you need help getting your kids set up on the system, send us an email to hello at ed.co.uk attaching a spreadsheet with your students' names and your classes and one of our team will help you. Hope you enjoyed that. I'll be back with a fresh Beat the Nation soon. Take care. Bye for now.